Charlie and I are going to explain to you how to use the Enrich Number Plumber. So Charlie, we need to start by choosing an input. So you can either have a drop input or a decimal input. Which would you like to choose? I'd like to drop one of the numbers that we have available. So I'll choose drop input. OK, once you've got an input, you need to do something with it. So you need to choose an operation. What operation would you like? I'd like to start by adding 5 to my chosen number. OK, so if you connect the drop input to the plus and then choose a 5 to add to it. And then I'd like to multiply that number by 2. OK, so connect what you've got to the multiply and then choose a 2. And now you need to select an output. So there's an output there and it's called F. So you can drag that across, but you can choose to call it anything you like. OK, let's call it Fred. And then you can connect your times 2 into your output. And we now have a function machine which will add 5 and then multiply by 2. All right, so let's just test this out. So if we start with 4... Add 5. That'd be 9. And then double. We should end up with 18. Oh, that's good. It worked. So we could drop some other numbers in, and at each step it would add 5 and then multiply by 2. So we could see that on a graph if you'd like to. All right. Let's minimise these boxes here to make room for a graph. And if you choose plots, it'll open the graph window. And you can see we've already got a point on there. Right, so we the input was 4, the output was 18. And here the x-coordinate is 4 and the y-coordinate is 18. Should we try dropping some other numbers in to see what happens? All right, um, let's go for 10. Add 5 is 15. I think we should end up with 30. Yes, we've got the point 10, 30 on the graph now. And we still have the point 418. So would you like to try any more points? All right, let's go for negative 5. Add 5 is 0, and then double should also be 0. So we can see the axes now because they're on the screen. They weren't on the screen before. So sometimes you might be given a number plumber that somebody's created which has things hidden on. Or you might want to create a hidden number plumber for somebody else. So Charlie, if you hover over any part of the number plumber, you can see that a little purple button appears to the right. And if you click on that purple button, everything will go a little bit fuzzy so that you can't read the numbers clearly. So now if we dropped a number in, we wouldn't be able to see what was happening. So if somebody didn't know what this number plumber did, or what Fred's mapping did, they might be asked to figure out what's going on. So we would need to be able to see the output, and you can do that by clicking on the output background and just holding so that the number appears. So 9 maps to 28, and if we tried several numbers, we might be able to figure out what was going on. And but we know that it's 9 to 28 because we've added 5 and doubled. Yes, but we can make everything revealed again once we've worked out what's going on by clicking on the purple button on each side. Now you've also got a red button on the left hand side and if you clicked on that it would delete our hard work. So. We don't want to do that, but you might want to delete the input, Charlie, so that we can have a look to see what other sorts of input we could use. So instead of having a drop input, we could have used a decimal input. And if you connect that up, Charlie, we'll be able to choose any number we like and type it in to our number plumber. So we could go for 2.5. So I think that's going to add 5 to make 7.5 and then multiply by 2 to give 15. So I'm going to drop my new value. 
Let's check that you're right. I was right. And it's appeared on the graph as well. Well, I hope that's given everybody a good introduction to how to use a number plumber. Why not go away and have a go at making some for yourself?